Bibles, Isaiah chapter 59, verses 14 through 16. It says that, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither is ear heavy, that it cannot hear. And judgment is turned away backwards. Justice stands afar off, for truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. Yet truth fails, and he that departs from evil makes himself a prey. And the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. And he saw that there was no man, and wondered that there was no intercession. He wondered that there was no one to intercede, no one to go forth with the gospel. And in that passage, I see three things that the, we'll say four, four things that the Lord cares about. Judgment, justice, truth, and intercessory prayer. Right? Judgment. You know, some judgment and justice. It is, are the people taken care of? Is there justice in the land? Is there judgment? Are the people living by a right standard? Truth. Is the word of God, the word of truth, rather, being being proclaimed daily, being read in the in the in the places of gathering, right? Truth and intercessory prayer. He wanted that there was no one to intercede, no one to stand in the gap and intercede for these people. And Paul makes a clear distinction in that passage that we read. There's a difference between you can preach the gospel in the wisdom of words, or you can preach in the power of God. All right, there's, he said, we, we do not preach the gospel in the wisdom of words, which the wisdom of man teacheth, but in the power of God, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And I want to talk about how, how can we preach Christ in the power of God. In Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 6, there's, there's three things. We'll start off with the Word of God. Ephesians chapter 6 describes the Word of God as a sword. I have here, this is Mr. Ethelo's machete, right? But let it represent the Word of God. A powerful sword that pierces the heart. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, it says that the Word of God is quick and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart, that the word of God is like a sword that goes forth. It's the thing that can that can pierce the heart, right? It's not the wisdom of our words, it's the word of God. It's already written down on paper for us. It's his word that goes forth in power and love to pierce the hearts, and I want to, I found this verse fascinating from the book of Matthew, right? What did Jesus come here to do? Did did Jesus come to send peace? Matthew 10, 34, think not that I am come to send peace on the earth. I am come not to send peace, but a sword, right? Jesus came, Jesus came to set something straight, right? came to set our sin straight. And we died on the cross and gave us the gospel. And we have the word of God and we can proclaim it in the fullness of its power or we can wash it down. And it's important that we would, you know, the Lord cares about judgment, that we would warn people with our wicked ways. We use the word of God in the fullness of its power to warn people. The second thing is intercessory prayer. And, and prayer is important, you know, when we go, when we decide, I want to preach the gospel, right, in the power of God, then we pray that we kind of have this door of utterance. And Paul, Paul mentions this door of utterance multiple times. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6, And for me that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. He said to pray for a door of utterance. Interesting. We, we're, we're supposed to pray that, that we have the words to speak, right? The, the gospel is promised. Jesus promised 
that the Lord would give us a mouth of wisdom when the time is right. But we should pray for them. We should pray for them. The book of Colossians chapter 4 is a similar prayer to Paul. With all praying for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. We should be praying, constantly praying, that we go forth with the power of God when we, when we do go forth. We go forth with the word of God. We go forth in the intercessory prayer. And we make sure that we have a pure heart. Those, the, the Christian people that are going to be doing the, the artifacts, right, this morning, they, they'll have a, a heart. I thought that was interesting. Why a heart? I'm realizing now this is a star. <laughs> <laughs> we get the idea. It was all right. <laughs> <laughs> They have a heart. Why? The book of James says that the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. Of a righteous man. I was talking with Sister Debbie. We love. Um, you know what? What makes Pastor Tim's prayers so powerful? We heard Pastor Tim pray. Mm -hmm. She said the key to his prayer is a pure heart. Right? It's a, a holy life that he doesn't he doesn't live like the rest of the world. He doesn't live like most Christians. He if you're gonna speak in the power of God, you need to be walking in the power of God. Every day of your life, every moment, every aspect of your being needs to be completely sold out to Christ. If you're gonna preach Christ in the power of God. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. We need to be walking in the perfect will of God, not straying to the right or to the left, right? It, even our, our thought life, every aspect of us, our countenance, our thoughts, our words, our actions, every part of our being needs to be brought into the captivity of Christ if we're, if we're going to walk in the power of God and speak in the power of God, right? If we're going to really proclaim the gospel in the fullness of its power. Right, so is the word that goes forth from my mouth, that will not return to me void, but will accomplish what I desire, and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. The Lord is sending us, in the fullness of His power, the authority of the Holy Spirit, to go and preach the word of God. And it will accomplish everything that He desires. Anything that the Lord has already ordained for it to happen, it will happen. He's just looking for that person, right? Going back to Isaiah 59, when the Spirit of the Lord, when the Spirit of the enemy shall come in like a flood, then the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against them. There is a moment when the Lord puts his foot down, right? Not, not one universal moment, possibly, but in every person's heart. But Mr. Luis. And Mama Yas, we saw him finally give his heart to Christ Amen. after years of Pastor Jorge working with him. The Lord put his foot down. He said he's going to come into the kingdom. He's going, Lord willing, to be a mighty warrior for Christ in the village of Mama Yas. Right? And the Lord will lift up his standard. The question is, who's going to do it? Right? The Lord's looking for someone to do, to do it, to do his work. Isaiah chapter six. Whom shall I send? He will go for us. And I said, Here I am, Lord. Send me. When we walk, we're walking in that perfect will of God. We're walking in the power of God. 
out of a pure heart and constant prayer, living a holy life, getting the Word of God in me, so that way I can preach it to others. Mm. That's a that's a difficult way, but it's a rewarding one. <clears throat> Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I also confess before my Father, which is in heaven. To me, that is the ultimate reward. That is the thing. As for me, that I look forward to every day. It's at the forefront of my mind all the time. That Christ would actually confess me before his Father in heaven. Because on this earth, I was faithful to proclaim him. Does anybody have any prayer requests? Yeah, but you guys back safely. Anybody else? Alright, let's try. Dear Lord, thank you for this trip. I want to thank you for, for Ecuador, for here, this place, Kumai, Lord, where you're raising up your standard against the power of the enemy. You're raising up this Bible school to train pastors that will go forth with your word to accomplish everything that you desire, to go forth in the fullness of its power and proclaim the gospel. We thank you, Lord, for safekeeping on this trip. We thank you for Commander Mike, his leadership on this trip, keeping us safe, keeping us well organized, Lord. We thank you for that. And we pray for a continual hand of protection for the rest of this trip. Lord, bless the missionaries here. Bless Miss Marcia and Mr. Itzlo, Mr. Pastor Eduardo and Pastor Jorge as they continue their work here in the jungle. And, and keep, keep your gospel going, Lord Jesus, as you will. And uh, we pray that your, your kingdom come, your will be done on this earth, just as it is in heaven.